In this video, we're giving you one obscure tip for every agent. So no matter what you play, there will be something for you. Starting off with KO, his molly is often the most underrated part of his kit. What very few players know is that there's a lot of verticality to the damage they can deal. For example, if you're sitting in hell on ascent like this, you can molly the ground to damage players in heaven without needing to peek out and throw it. Use this verticality to keep enemies at bay safely without the need for lineups. For our jet players out there, we've got the super dash. This involves dashing on a certain spot on the map to launch yourself into the air. The most popular spot is here on Icebox. To do this, you have to stand in this corner and attack or spawn. Look downwards around here, then dash and jump. You'll be able to see Kitchen, Defender spawn, B main, and Boiler with this super dash, giving you a lot of opportunities to bag some kills. When ulted with Yoru, a lot of people think that the blue only appears if you're close. But that's not always the case. Just staring at your enemies will give your opponents the nice blue outline on their screen. But there is a catch. If you hold out utility before peeking into someone, the visual indicator that appears around their screen to tell them that you're in line of sight won't come up. You have to do this before peeking into your opponent though, or else they know exactly what's up regardless. Our tip for Killjoy is to place down a turret on the ground before dropping down to surf off drop silently. When you land on top of your turret, your feet make no noise, and so you're able to get the jump on enemies who might not realize you've already dropped. Sure, the turret will make the sound, but it's not as loud, and enemies don't tend to assume that you're standing directly on top of your turret. Definitely don't use this every round, but if you're retaking and your turret goes off cooldown, who knows, it could be worth a try. For Astra, our tip is that her gravity well works for utility as well. It's a well-known fact that Astra's pull ability can suck players out of position into its center. But did you know it does the same with deployable utility? Things like Raze's boombots and more importantly Killjoy's utility. Just put a pull down near a turret to where you want to move it to, and you might be able to get it shifted out from its position holding the angle and sneak up to get free kills on unsuspecting opponents. If you execute this well, it can really mess with any potential setups. The next agent on our list is Breach, and we're stepping up the obscurity with this one. So you're pushing B on Ascent, and you just stun main to clear it for your team. You're still far back, but there's a way to flash sight without flashing your team here. If you aim your flash just here on the lower grade trim of the wall to the left of the wooden box in main, the flash actually goes all the way through to sight. So any players pushing lane can have a flash set up for them without blinding them as they go. If you're a breach main, this one's a must know. And before we move on with the rest of the roster, I'd quickly like to mention that we also offer coaching, exclusive courses, and more over on our website ProGuides.com. If you're interested, you can get access for just $8 a month, and it's what we'd recommend to anyone that's truly serious about Valorant. So if you're looking to climb in the quickest way, make sure to check us out. Harbor mains don't need to worry because unlike Riot, we haven't forgotten them. You might know that Harbor's ultimate moves forward in the direction you're facing, but did you know that you can make it travel faster to cover more distance by moving forwards, and travel slower in the same area for longer by moving backwards? Just move in the direction you want based on your goals while casting his ultimate, and there you have it. Sky's flashes are a great tool to fake out opponents. Enemies will often turn in advance to avoid being flashed. But with Sky, you don't even have to pop the flash until you want to. This makes it the perfect tool to deploy and swing enemies without actually flashing to find them when their backs are turned. Just send out the Hawk and peek to shoot them in the back. The flash might have been nerfed in duration, but the reflex of people to turn is still very much there. Time to abuse it. For Brimstone, we've got advice on how to use his ultimate. Namely, you want to minimize the amount his ultimate goes off the map to maximize the area it covers, making it harder to escape. For example, when ulting the bomb here on Fracture, a lot of people tend to center their ultimate on the spike itself. But you don't have to. If you want to do maximum damage and even have a chance at killing enemies, you want to put it at the very edge instead. Enemies will have to run out further, giving you the opportunity to peek and kill them. The same goes when ulting Killjoy lockdowns too. It's not going to make a difference whether it's on the edge of the ult or in the middle if it can't move. So when you notice the enemy Killjoy has an ultimate, be ready and waiting with your ultimate to cover a lot of the escape path and make the most of it. If the Killjoy isn't quick to know what's going on, you'll be able to do a ton of damage, even outside of the fact that you just ended their B-take hopes and dreams. Our tip for Chamber is all about his Headhunter ability. The Headhunter gets pulled out much faster than any conventional weapon, which gives it a lot of potential for securing multi-kills when AWPing. After you take a shot with an Operator, enemies will usually peek to try to get the kill before your gun resets for the next shot. However, by pulling the Headhunter out immediately after your shot, you'll be armed with a one-tap weapon to stop the trade from coming in and hitting some awesome clips while doing it. For Cypher, we've got another map-specific one, and this time it's an unbreakable cam on Split. Come over to screen on A and jump to place your camera up here on this wall. You're able to watch the cross comfortably and enemies can't break it through the window. The only trade-off is that you can't tag them either, but with good comms and pings that shouldn't be a problem. Fade Seize is an excellent tool for information especially when clearing those corners. 
So our tip is to, well, do that. More specifically, you should use her seas instead of her prowlers if you want info on just one close corner so that the prowler's travel time isn't wasted and can be used later on in the round in a more appropriate situation. One of the best places to showcase this idea is behind B screens of Pearl. A super annoying area to clear, but by simply throwing in a siege you can quickly get info first of all and spam any enemies that they are hiding there as a bonus, especially now that they're stuck, low HP, and helpless without sound. Neon Slide is a great tool for peeking enemies in unexpected ways. When combined with our ultimate, it's possible to double slide to quickly change directions and make your enemies miss their shots. All you have to do is slide and pop your ultimate halfway through, then immediately slide again in whichever direction you want. Oh, and as a bonus, since you have infinite slides before the round starts, remember that you can slide towards the barriers milliseconds before they go down to effectively get a free slide at the start of every round. For Phoenix, we've got a tip that all Radiant players use, especially when playing on Ascent. In A main, you can molly the cubby just by standing in this corner. Throw the molly like this. You don't even need to be very accurate, anywhere around here will do. And then flashing and peeking the attackers that are now exposed as they come out of the corner. By forcing them out of a common hiding spot, they're stuck in the open, fully blind and ready to kill. Raze's Boombot recently saw a nerf that cut its duration in half. However, that doesn't mean that it still doesn't have some useful mechanics including the ability to stick a satchel onto it. This creates some super interesting possibilities from launching it up when it locks onto an enemy, or sending it out and following it to peak and then satchel yourself back immediately without putting your gun away. There's a lot of options here, so be creative. For Reyna, we've got a tip about getting your heals completed. If you can't reach your orb completely if it's behind a ledge, you can jump up and down on the spot to keep the heal going since it only cuts out after you spend at least a second cut off from it. Keep on hopping to get your health up. It might look dumb, but it could save your life. For Sage, we've got a tip on how to wall yourself up even higher. For example, on top of Radiantite boxes. What you gotta do is get your wall ready, then jump and crouch before casting your wall. This can allow you to wall up onto surfaces without needing to be on the same level beforehand. It's a great way to get unexpected off angles and catch your opponents off guard. Our tip for Sova involves his ultimate as well. Did you know that you can actually float in the air while casting his ultimate? While the laser is being shot, jump up to get more height to be level with where you're shooting at. You can use this for style points or to even get on top of boxes you wouldn't expect a Sova to be able to access. For Viper, our tip is to look at people's feet. No, not all the time, just when in her ultimate. Looking down when in Viper's ultimate means you can see slightly further than usual, allowing you to get the jump on any enemies vibing in the poison mist. That first shot is all the more important when you're in a Viper's pit, and by seeing the opponent first you can win your fights and secure more rounds. And for Omen, you can manipulate his blind speeds with your movement, just like Harbor's ultimate. When you flash for your teammates, you usually want to run forward to speed up the flash and give your enemies less time to react. And if you're in a 1v1 running backwards, it can be useful to give yourself time to peek with it. Though honestly, if you're in a 1v1 post plant and you haven't used your flash, you probably misplayed it to begin with. But that's another story. So that wraps up our list of one obscure tip for every agent. If you have any tips of your own, feel free to share them in the comments below as we try to read all of them. And as always, leave a like and subscribe for more great tips and tricks. This is your host Sergeant Frost and I'll see you all again in the next one.